So, my friends, let's talk. I am probably... Wait, hold on. Just a side note. I am probably never going to do a video like this ever again. But if I do end up getting do, doing another one and it gets attention and you people like it, I'll do another one. So today I'm going to be going over CTC. Now, you may be wondering, why the f*** am I doing this in Lost Word? Well, I still have some stuff to go over with Lost Word, so I might as well just do two videos in one. I don't fucking know. Aside from that, let's talk about CTC, aka Conceal the Conclusion. Conceal the Conclusion was a total fan game made by the name of Don Mock, I believe. His name was Don Mock. And he was the original creator of Toho Concealed the Conclusion. Now, it is a very good game, and obviously it's a fan-made work. I'm not sure if it's official. It's probably one of the most popular, I believe, uh, Toho games, aside from Lunar Knight, which is made by Team Ladybug, and others, such as Yoibana, Toho 15.5, which is also made by Zun, which is essentially just a remaster of, uh, what was it called? 13.5, which is literally the same exact thing, but I think it's called something else. <laughs> That's right. 13.5 is basically just 15.5, but 15.5 is the remake. Don't get them confused. Okay, moving on. So, CDC. CDC was probably one of the most popular and heartbreaking Doho fan games of, I don't know, the decade, century, and probably still is. And honestly, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it gameplay but you know the game uh i think it was pretty sad not gonna lie like it, it, it'll probably have you crying now <laughs> spoiler warning here uh i forgot to do that in my first recording so i'm probably gonna end up cutting that part out so yes there's spoilers to cdc so if you want to play ctc i suggest you click off this video right now because we're about to get into some major spoilers into the game so, Conceal the Conclusions. Conceal the Conclusion was a game made by Don Mock. He went over the introduction. Boom. Done. So, CDC. Towards the ending of the game, uh, or towards one of the segments of the game, if I believe, if I'm correct, I'm not play this shit in a while. So, towards the, towards the, uh, sort of ending of, uh, CDC, Marissa is like, I don't believe Ray was dead, but everybody is telling her, shut the fuck up, Mar Marissa, she's dead. Okay, even Eki tore, like, even Eki. And Eki is the judge of the dead. She's always right. She knows that Reibu is dead. And she literally said she passed through the netherworld. She's dead. And Mercer's like, no, she's not dead. I'm going to find Reibu. So, you know, she goes on the quest to find Reibu. And is obviously stopped by, uh, I believe, who is Yiko and Yukari. Because Yiko and Yukari are saying, hey, you can't go see Reibu. She's already dead. There's no point. Just give up. Just give up, Mercer. She's like, no, I'm going to find Reibu. And this is exactly what makes me like Marissa as a character, like especially in the fan game, because this wasn't something Zun actually ended up doing. Zun didn't just take a character and say, "Oh, you know, let me make this." Ca like, on like honestly, well, maybe it was part of Zun's um, master plan or whatever to maybe make Marissa like a really good character. Like honestly, if it was if it wasn't for Zun, I feel like Marissa wouldn't be the character she was in CTC. And in CTC, she really shows how a protagonist should be. And yes, I should note, Marissa is the protagonist of CTC, uh, at least towards the ending. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> so, you know, it's happening all that. So, what makes Marissa a good character, and, like, overall, and just in the game itself, is the fact that she went out of her way, a energetic and, just, like, an energetic and non-boring person just goes out of her way to find her friend, because she believes she wasn't dead. Which is really how a protagonist should be. Because Marissa was probably one of the most closest, I quote, closest, one of the closest, I quote that part, one of the closest people to Raymu. Because, I mean, she was like, hey, let's go solve an incident. And there was the argument with NPCB, where she was like, hey, there's probably an incident. And we like, no, there's no, let me just chill. At least in Memories of Phantasm, I'm just following along because I didn't fucking buy PCB. All right, leave me alone. Anyways, you know, so in PCB, she was like, hey, I think there's a Yokai incident. And I was like, oh, okay. So they're going to fuck some shit up. And they're like, yeah. And, you know, Marissa goes, trying to solve the incident. And, like, you know, it's like, you go, fucking Yukari, Ranch, and Yomu, all those bastards, trying to torture me with your fucking spoke. It's supposed to be fucking Yukari. The stupid barrier move, whatever the fuck it was. Fucking last word. Hated it, all right? Aside from that. So, you know, what makes Marissa a good character, especially in CTC, is obviously who she, the part she played. So she played as the protagonist, basically, the one who said, we're just going to go find Reimu. 
So she goes to set out on a journey to find Ryamu just to be stopped by three characters, I believe. I believe it was Yuko, Yuko and Yukari, which ended up as a duo. And then it was, uh, what's her face, Eki, who also told her that Ryamu was dead, but she didn't believe her. So she went about her way to kick the young's ass, apparently, or something like that. And she came to find that Ramu was actually dead and she was a ghost of vengeance. Which also leads me to one of my other points. What if Ramu is the secret Hawkway god? Oh my god. XD, XD, one on one, punctuation mark. Anyways, <laughs> aside from that, you know, that, that was just a theory I spread on one of the comments for one of the Ramu's themes in CDC. But you know, aside from all that, uh -huh. so you know. Marissa goes to find out that Rainbow's dead, and she's like, oh, shit, Rainbow's dead. It's, oh, no, Rainbow's dead. Oh, no, how horrible. So, you know, she finds out Rainbow's dead, and she's like, hey, want to have a lot of final Don Maku? Or, actually, no, the first thing she said was, do you want to talk over and have some tea? And then she's like, there's no time for a tea, Marissa. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm literally dead. She's like, oh, well, that's bad. Oh, okay. She's like, yeah. Yeah, that's bad, Marissa. It's like, oh, okay, then you want to have a final uh, Maku battle? And then Rainbow's like, sure, but it's going to kill me. So, you know, you end up beating Rainbow in Phase, in phase 1, and then she goes to Phase 2 right after some dialogue where, she said, where Marissa's like, hey, you're supposed to be my winning dog. Come on, man. You, I know you got more than that. You're literally fucking dead. Come on, you can do more than that, Rainbow. And, you know, she's, she's, just, she's just like, she's like, just like, sort of pressuring her to like keep going because she knows Rainbow didn't lose because, I mean, it's the fucking Hakurei Shrine Maiden. Literally the one, the OP one that f spams fantasy, you know, memories of phantasm. And yeah, that was a heavy spoiler, but you know, I mean, come on, it's like it's a literal fanime, dude. You can't expect her to not spam fantasy seal. That's literally one of her, of her best, if not only, spell cards she fucking uses. I mean, hey, unless you got, you, unless you can name like all of her fucking spell cards in every single day damn game then be my guest and go ahead and do that in the comments i'm not stopping you in fact i will actually pin that comment if you can name every single rainbow spell card last word and basically every single attack she's used within the past whole series excluding fan games because then that would take a while so you know yeah just do the ones that, from the ones that from the official games like not not fan games such as luna knights because luna knights would then be like a ton of fuck ton of attacks that we couldn't even name so they would just be like, no, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what you call them. You know, aside from all that. So, you know, Marissa's like, you're my winning dog. And, you know, she comes back in phase two. And then you kill her. And then it's like, oh, shit. Gensoke is coming to an end. And then Suiga says, all right, let me do something. Let me recreate Gensoke with my lolly Ani power. So, you know, she ends up going to do that. And, you know, she does it well. And then, you know, Yiko and Yukari is like, hey. It's time to get out against Zokyo. And it's like, Marissa's like, nah, man, I'm not trying to leave with any of you guys. It's been a damn good trip since all the fucking incidents that happened. You know, that's not actually what she said, but, it, but, but hey, that was just my interpretation of it. So, you know, they're like, come on, you got to get out against Zokyo. The world's ending. And they're like, no, I don't want to go without you guys. This is a fair. And, you know, they end up, you know, bringing her out. And then, you know, Reba and Marissa go and wake up in a coma in the real world. And honestly, it's, it's, it's an emotional game if you play, but my interpretation would literally just make you laugh your socks off if you're wearing socks. And yes, that's if you're wearing socks. Jokes aside, the game was really good. And it really, like I said, it shows how a protagonist should be. And it shows how an antagonist should be, especially when you're coming towards, like, the final ending. Like, you know, this is like, fucking what, ending 2 of CDC, consider the conclusion? You know, like, that was a really good way to put an ending, like, you know... Just have the two main characters of the series, the two good guys, fight against each other as a final battle because one betrayed the other. Like, I feel like that's how a good game should be. That's how a good game works. That's how a game should be. You know, towards the ending of the game series, or what, what you might call it, I feel like the two protagonists should go against each other because of conflicting decisions, whereas one wants to keep the world and one wants to destroy it due to it being a figment in their imagination now i may be using some big boy words so i'm gonna try and sum this up two main characters two big big people of the series they go at it one has one has an argument with the other whether it be internally or externally they end up fighting and then you know maybe 
one loses and the other wins, or maybe both of them lose. I mean, in this sense, they kind of both lost, but technically, Raymond still took that W because he still ended up ending against Tokyo, like fucking Chad. But, I mean, again, Tokyo won't be ending anytime soon, though, so uh, don't rely on it. Uh, all jokes aside, you know, I'm done talking about CDC. That's just something I wanted to cover, and that's something I probably will cover never again. And it, honestly, I mean, if you want me to cover one, I would definitely go ahead and do that. I would definitely waste my time covering another Toe against Lore, or just something I, I seem to like about the game. You know, maybe she want me to go over to Luna Knights or Heal Ibana. I would definitely go and do that. If you're just lazy enough to not get the game, or if you just want me to talk about it because of my uh, very, very good detail, long explanation. God, this video is probably going to be like 25 minutes long. Somebody please send help. Aside from all the CGC stuff, the Remy and Saki banner came out about like a day or so ago. So, you know, you can go pick up on that. Uh, Remelia is a good, good unit. As for Saki, she isn't that good, and you can get her from the story or standard banner. Remelia will be added to the standard banner soon as well, so you should go... Uh, you know, go summon on that. Originally, she was supposed to be added to Karindo Roulette, in which in JP, she was actually on Karindo Roulette, along with a few other units, I believe, unless that's just me, because I can't read fucking Kanji or Hiragana or Katakana. I don't read any of that. So, you know, Remy Saki a banner. Um, the Phantom Made for an event, the, the Phantom Made for a Day event is here, except it's not actually for a day, it's actually for, like, since, like, June 9th or something like that. So, you know, you should definitely go grind out the event. I'm just grinding out the Marissa mission, and you'll end up in Lanky at some point within the story of the event. And you pretty, you'll, you'll get 300 points, but if you just keep grinding and grinding, you'll end up eventually getting 10k after, like, about... Uh, a lot of runs. Yeah, you'll probably have to do uh, quite a bit of runs to do this. So now that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll catch you guys in some other video where I end up doing it on fucking JP. Because I have not covered JP content in a fucking while. Alright, that's it for me. I'll catch you guys later. And that's Nanashi. Ignore the snap.